Welcome back to another FPL video. This is going to be the final team selection video. There might still be a few tweaks here and there on the deadline stream. I would encourage you to join me tomorrow. It will be two hours before the official deadline. So from around 4.30 p.m. UK time, I will be streaming. So be sure to tune in for that as well. And we can help each other out to optimize our FPL teams and also have a great time in the process. In this video, I'll be talking about a few changes I've made from my previous drafts. But as I said, this team isn't final. So bear that in mind. Mind. there might still be a few tweaks here and there but honestly it's really just two or three positions where there's maybe three or four candidates for those positions but everything else is pretty much set in stone and i don't see too many wholesale changes over the next 24 hours if you end up enjoying this video be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's get ever closer towards 20,000 subscribers and reach new goals in the future without further ado let's jump straight into this video I discussed the Nano already in my last draft and he has stayed and I think I will be keeping the Cameroonian international. He had a fantastic season for Inter Milan last time out and he was the top dog in UCL fantasy amongst goalkeepers. He had 63 points overall. He kept eight clean sheets from 13 games and in the knockout stages, he was integral to Inter Milan reaching the Champions League final and at just 5 million, I think the saves and bonus points potential is massive and with some pretty good fixtures I think in the medium to long term I think that's what seals it for me and the only viable alternative in my opinion is Flecken for a 4.5 million goalkeeper but amongst 5 million choices we've got Ramsdale and Raya who will be competing for the number one spot at Arsenal but that's still going to be a bit tricky to predict and that's why I think Anana is a safe bet and also Luke Shaw as good as he is he's half a million more expensive at 5.5 million so I think Anana is probably the best value for money for the Man United defence and I'm very happy to have him for the opening portion of the season. The defence has largely stayed the same, but there is one key change on the bench. But Gabriel has been a constant in all of my drafts, and I think he's very underpriced at 5 million. He got 146 FPL points in the last season, and also in the campaign before that, he is also really good in terms of goals scored amongst centre-backs and defenders. He scored three last season, five the campaign before, and he is always a presence for from set pieces and I think he could be the best way of covering Arsenal defensively although Raya slash Ramsdale might have something to say about that and also the new signing of Jurian Timber who can play as a left back centre back and right back and I think he's just so comfortable on the ball and he was arguably man of the match against Manchester City in the Community Shield final but Gabriel for me is just nailed on very reliable Mr Consistent and I'm only a bit worried about his yellow cards he didn't get too many last season in the Premier League but in pre-season he has gotten two yellow cards in his last three games and that's a bit concerning and also three bookings in six games overall so that'd be a bit of a concern but apart from that I think Gabriel's got the fixtures he played He's on a top team and he also offers really good value for money at just 5 million. Then we go on to the other defenders in this team and John Stones might be a bit of an issue in the long term with Gavardiol being signed by Man City. He comes in at just 5 million too and John Stones didn't play that inverted role against Arsenal as Man City deployed more of a 4-2-4 formation so that could be a bit concerning for John Stones and with Man City adding more depth in the back line, you could see John Stones being rotated from time to time. So I think John Stones is probably the least nailed on from my defence, but Gabriel certainly will be in my starting eleven from Gemic 1. John Stones is less of a certainty, but Purvis Stupinian has some fantastic opening fixtures, even in game week 6 against Bournemouth. I think he's got a good opening portion to the season, despite some tricky games in game weeks 4 and 5, and he's got the goal threat, but more so than not, he's got the assist potential the creativity the bonus points and I think the Ecuadorian left back is very promising in that regard so I think Stupinian and Gabriel are quite nailed on in my team selection John Stones however is a different story Arsenal midfielders are popular for a reason and Bakayo Saka is one of the most highly owned players in FPL heading into game week one. He's on penalties, he's nailed on just 8.5 million, yet another Arsenal player that you would argue is severely underpriced. We all expected him to be between 9 to 10 million after a fantastic campaign last time out, scoring 14 times, getting 12 assists as well. Double digits in both is very impressive for a player of his age. He's pretty decent for bonus points, although not as good as Martin Odegaard. 
Odegaard and I would argue Martinelli has the best goal threat from the Arsenal midfielders and players in general but he's also a bit less nailed on than Bakayo Saka so I'm very happy to have him and I have to say Saka during pre-season has been one of the more impressive players for Arsenal and he's only blanked once in all of the games he's featured in and that was against Man United in every other game he has produced an assist or a goal at the very least, including against Manchester City to set up Trossard for that 100th minute equaliser in the Community Shield. Then we go to the other Arsenal player, and that is Martinelli. That is my triple up, and he hasn't been too impressive in pre-season. I would argue between him, Havertz, Saka and Odegaard, Martinelli has been the least impressive of those four, but I don't expect that to play too much of a part in the opening portion of this season and I still think you'll have a pretty solid start to the campaign and get a couple of goals in the process but Kai Havertz has scored twice you've got Odegaard getting two assists Martinelli getting one goal and one assist during pre-season but I think his performances in general have left a bit to be desired and having said all of that I still have a lot of confidence in him as an FPL asset and I think he'll start in game week one and also going into the future the same can definitely be said for the next player Bruno Fernandes one of the most nailed on players in the league League, and he comes in at just 8.5 million we're all expecting him to be on penalties he also has a really good FPL record historically and despite a bit of an underwhelming campaign that just went by he still got a healthy number of FPL points almost 180 and I would actually expect him to outscore Marcus Rashford this season but I might be wrong about that it's just a bit of an early season prediction and let's see how it pans out but ultimately I don't expect too many points to separate both of them the same goes for the Arsenal duo of Saka and Martinelli and even if you include Odegaard I just don't see too many points separating all of those midfielders overall and then we go to Marcus Rashford he remains in my draft and in my team and that's two midfield double ups for Arsenal and Man United and Rashford had a good end to pre-season against Lens with a very solid display but apart from that he had a bit of a shaky start you could argue because he didn't produce a single return before that game against the French opposition and the final midfielder is definitely not nailed on this is the big question mark because for me, it's between Mbumo, Eze, and maybe a bright midfielder like Matoma for that final midfielder slot. And overall, from the players we've covered so far, John Stones and Mbumo are two of the most likely to be changed. I'm not saying they definitely will be changed, but if you look at the rest, I'm quite happy and settled on those selections. But John Stones and Mbumo, I definitely have question marks about them. You've got viable alternatives like Luke Shaw and Chilwell for the five-point family and defenders, for example, and also many other choices at five million and below for the defenders. And for Mbumo, like I said, Eze, Matoma, and you've even got other good options popping up to the surface. Richarlison at seven million could be a fantastic out position asset with Harry Kane possibly moving ahead to Bayern Munich but the thing with Mbumo is he's got good medium to long-term fixtures and that's what he has over Matoma and Eze and he's also playing out of position as a left winger slash striker he could be on penalties and he had a fantastic end to the season whenever Tony was absent Mbumo stepped up to the plate and was very consistent with his returns but then again the sample size is very small and I would be a bit cautious about that I'm not saying Mbumo is going to be absolutely fantastic and as you can see he is yellow flag currently with a dead leg but we're all expecting him to be fine fit and available ahead of that game week one clash with Tottenham Hotspur but Mbumo is one of my favorite 6.5 million midfielders but he could easily become Eze or Matoma. There's no point talking about this next player too much because Erling Haaland is in all of our teams pretty much and it's very rare to see a draft without Erling Haaland. It's a bit of a shame that Harry Kane looks to be on the brink of moving away to Bayern Munich because otherwise you have to put the question that Harry Kane is a viable alternative and from game X2 to 38 he outscored Erling Haaland. Of course it's a 38 game season, Erling Haaland had better points per game but Harry Kane can definitely match Erling Haaland if he stays at Tottenham Hotspur. You saw him score three or four goals the other day Day. he's absolutely insane but so is Erling Haaland he's got fantastic long-term fixtures for Man City he's fixture proof and he's also going to be a shield pick we're all going to captain him pretty much every single week but there will be opportunities to go against him and the way I'm looking at it in terms of the captaincy is when he faces a bottom free side or a newly promoted club like Burnley even away from home I'd still be looking to captain him but maybe when he's away from home against a top half side where his ceiling might be lower in general that's why I'd look to captain someone else maybe a Saka at home to Nottingham Forest for example but here because he's facing Burnley away I think most of us will still gravitate towards the Norwegian striker and the next one 
is Jackson. He's been in terrific form, not just in pre-season, but also towards the end of his Villarreal career. Even on international duty, he was scoring goals. I've covered him extensively in the best forwards video. Now, Jackson is definitely not nailed on in my team because Watkins is a more reliable option overall. And despite Aston Villa not having great fixtures, they're still pretty decent. And Oli Watkins is fixture-proof in my opinion. But Jackson has better fixtures. And I'm expecting Chelsea to improve dramatically this season to score multiple goals. They might not challenge for the title or show real consistency and they can be very frustrating even with their FPL assets but I think there's a lot of potential in the Chelsea ranks. You look at Chilwa at the back, even Reese James, Jackson up front in Cuckoo once he comes back from his injury and actually if it wasn't for that injury against Borussia Dortmund I think Cuckoo would have been in my final squad and I would have had no doubts about the second forward but unfortunately with his injury it's now between Jackson, I would say Oli Watkins and possibly Joao Pedro for that second forward slot but let's now talk about the bench and the captaincy before moving on to fpl.team and talking about draft hound once turner's move to nottingham forest is recognized by fpl he will come into my squad and he will be my backup four million goalkeeper i've also got chilo in here so that's two chelsea players but the big problem with this is that they will be benching headaches even in game week two and I'm not that comfortable with benching Chilwell at home to Liverpool. It's not the worst, and I'm expecting Liverpool to score, but it's still going to be a bit of an issue. I've also still got Bulldog and Mabama, so that hasn't changed too much. So compared to the last draft, the key changes are Mbumo in for Eze, Jackson in for Oli Watkins, and Chilwell coming in for Pau Torres. But I think those three positions are maybe the most susceptible to change alongside John Stones for that 5.5 million defender slot. I'm still reconsidering that potentially, but the rest, including Anana, Gabriel, Saka, Martinelli, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford and Erling Haaland, I would argue all of those selections are pretty nailed on and I'd be very surprised if I made some last minute tinkerings in those positions as well. But let's now talk about the captaincy and as I referenced earlier, I'm probably going to go for Erling Haaland because he's facing Burnley away. I would expect Erling Haaland to score at least once but I'm actually backing him to get a brace in this game and with Saka as good as that fixture is against Nottingham Forest and I would encourage you to at least consider captain an Arsenal player over Erling Haaland this week the goals might be shared amongst the Gunners and yes they might be the most likely team to score three plus goals but the goals will be shared and with Erling Haaland he is obviously going to be at the center of all the chances that Man City create but let's wait and see I still think it's going to be a really close call for the captaincy and Erling Haaland Saka and Martinelli is the way I'm looking to go. That is my podium for the captaincy for my team selection. Let's now go into FPL.team and preview game week two with this 50-man squad. And there are some issues that already rise to the surface. I would definitely consider playing Turner in game week two. On here, it says he's facing Crystal Palace away because he's still technically an Arsenal player in FPL. But he will be facing Sheffield United at home compared to Anana facing Tottenham away. Let me know down in the comment section below. Would you start Anana or Turner in game week two? That's not going to be a huge conundrum, but it's also a bit of a team selection headache. And I'm also going for a back three of Gabriel, John Stones, Estupinian, that same midfield five, Saka, Martinelli, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, and Mbumo, and a front two of Holland and Jackson. But I've also got Chilwell, a 5.5 million defender, almost premium, you could argue, on my bench yet again against West Ham away and West Ham despite winning a trophy last season towards the end there is still a lot of unrest even David Moyes there are rumors of him threatening to quit the club and they aren't really making too many signings I know Edson Alvarez is about to be signed there as a Declan Rice replacement and there is more activity happening now for the Hammers but you get that sensation that they might struggle a lot with the loss of Declan Rice. And if they don't recruit properly, they could be in a real relegation fight once again. I've also got Bulldog and Mabama as well, completing my bench, but I'm a bit unsure about having Chilwell and not even starting him in Gemix one or two. And I actually don't mind that West Ham away fixture even from a defensive perspective for a team that was so inconsistent last season in Chelsea. Now for the captaincy, I'm looking at this 50-man squad and I don't like it at all. And really, this is where 
those Salah owners are going to probably gain something over those non-Salah owners, of course, and you can easily captain him at home to Bournemouth. Last time out, they won 9-0. I think he got an assist, but he didn't score a single goal. And I actually might be wrong about that. Maybe Salah blanked last season, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't expect that to happen once again. I think Liverpool will win quite comprehensively and Salah is going to be one of the highest scoring players and break his Game Week 2 curse. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below about Game Week 2 and which concerns do you have about your squads going into the future. Let me now quickly show you Draft Hound and talk about how impressive and helpful it has been in the construction of my FPL team. You can find a link to Draft Town in the description below. Using my link, you can become a pro tier member by upgrading. But I would firstly encourage you to try it out first for free. And if you like it enough, and I think you will, that's where you can consider upgrading and becoming a pro tier and paid member. And I'm just going to show you a few of these tools very briefly. So if you look at this, as I was discussing before, there are three or four players I'm unsure about. And those are going to be the final kind of team selection headaches ahead of the deadline. So let's actually deal with them now. So Ben Shaw is one of them. Uh, Jackson is a second one in Bumo and possibly John Stones and as you can see here with this green one tool you could argue you click on it and then put auto pick and look at the suggestions that they give me Trent Alexander-Arnold, Matoma, Joao Pedro and Colwell I have to say those are some really good suggestions and something I haven't even considered before Trent Alexander-Arnold is someone that is still going to be one of the best defenders in the game despite the increase in his price tag and I have to say I actually really like the look of it and it's probably just going to give me more team selection headaches over the next 24 hours but that's the kind of suggestions that the assistant manager tool can provide you and it can also open up your thinking because sometimes even myself included I think about FPL a bit too rigidly and I've got kind of a set plan like Eze and Buma or Matoma for that one spot but it could also open up possibilities like getting Trellix on the Arnold in your back line and also staying within budget and you also look at the other tools here player rankings I've referred to this multiple times over the last few weeks and Rashford is actually now the highest in terms of expected points in game week one Erling Haaland is now second so things have changed the algorithm does take form into account even in pre-season and if we look at chance of scoring amongst many other metrics you have at your disposal Haaland remains top but Rashford now has closed the gap and he's in second place you've even got some surprise inclusions like Danny Welbeck in the top three after some really good showings in pre-season you've got the fiction analysis as well where you can sort it out by a defensive perspective so a chance of a clean sheet chance of winning or chance of two plus goals which is ideal from an attacking point of view and Arsenal are top of that metric over the first five game weeks of the season you've also got player comparison tools Haaland against Harry Kane if he stays in the Premier League. Rashford against Saka if that's going to be one of your conundrums, although I would recommend you having both. And also predicted lineups, which is also actually a new tool that they've released over the last week or so. And you look at this, and I have to say it's very reliable. Timber, Gabriel, Saliba, White, Ramsdale. I'm looking at this, and the only concern I would possibly have is maybe Trossard coming in after a fantastic campaign over the summer. And he could come in for Kai Havertz, but it's still a really solid prediction for Arsenal. And it also gives you a prediction in terms of expected minutes. And for the most part, for the Arsenal players at least, it looks pretty spot on. And it also reflects what's happened in the past on many occasions. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Have you tried Draft Town yet? And what are your thoughts about the website? I have actually found myself enjoying FPL even more and also seeing it from a different perspective after using the tools provided by Draft Hound. And let me know what you think about my team, your teams, anything else you want to talk about, comment section down below. You've got that avenue. You've got the Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, all the links in the description below. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes. Let's keep on pushing towards 20,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships, Discord server, the FPL League, and also Draft Town. I'd highly encourage you to try out first and then consider becoming a paid pro tier member. Thank you very much for all your support. I'll see you very soon for the deadline stream, and I also wish you all the very best for the upcoming season, and I'll see you next time.